Man Ray is possibly the biggest threat to Bikini Bottom, but didn't he decide at one point he was going to change his ways? Huh? So how did he go from a reformed villain to the evil mastermind we see in later episodes? And I know what you're thinking, bro, it's a cartoon show, there's no continuity. Well, here's the thing. First of all, shut up. And second of all, I figured out the reason why Man Ray is still evil. I've rewatched dozens of episodes and again, I'm like 74% sure my theory cannot be debunked. You see, decades ago, Man Ray was a formidable threat to Bikini Bottom, though his grand plans were constantly ruined by Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy, often through the most bizarre means, like being encased in tartar sauce. He's human with a blue helmet shaped like a head of a manta ray and a red body. His gloves, boots, and speedo are all blue, but what's really interesting about him is that he's actually a parody of Aquaman's arch enemy, Black Manta. And oddly, Man Ray also has no head under his helmet. There's even another theory about how Man Ray is actually not even human at all but a robot controlled by the ray on top of his head because apparently manta rays in real life do conduct electricity but that's like a whole other theory for another video what makes man ray truly fascinating is his personality he's a villain who craves world dominations in later episodes yet if we rewind to the first episode we saw him in by the end he had already changed his ways so how would it be possible for him to still be evil in later seasons See, the first time we see Man Ray is the episode Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy 3. I know I say this in like every video, but this was peak SpongeBob. It kicks off with Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy heading out for a vacation. They leave SpongeBob and Patrick in charge of their lair with one simple rule. Don't touch anything. But you know SpongeBob and Patrick, and curiosity will always get the best of them. So while exploring, they find Man Ray frozen in tartar sauce. SpongeBob, being his curious self, wants to ask him questions, and Patrick, always eager to help, accidentally starts thawing him out. Man Ray eventually convinces them that he's actually a good guy now, so they unfreeze him completely, but surprise, surprise, he tries to attack them. Luckily though, he is still wearing a tickle belt, which SpongeBob uses to stop him. This is basically like the equivalent of a dog shot collar. Now Man Ray, realizing he's stuck wearing this belt, pretends he wants to learn how to be good. SpongeBob and Patrick, bless their hearts, decide to teach him. Now, the first lesson is one of the most iconic things that ever came from this show. And it was teaching Man Ray how to return a lost wallet. This must be your wallet. That makes sense to me. Then take it. It's not my wallet. <laughs> yeah. So Man Ray's patience snaps and he nearly loses it, causing SpongeBob and Patrick to activate the tickle bell. But next up was helping someone with a heavy object. But Patrick's box kept dropping on Man Ray's foot, driving him nuts. And then when Man Ray asks what's inside, it's revealed to just be more wallets. So Man Ray gets so mad that SpongeBob had to use the tickle bell again. Eventually, because you know it's SpongeBob and Patrick, they end up breaking the tickle belt remote, causing the belt to just completely malfunction. Man Ray is tickled so much that he genuinely pleads for release and SpongeBob and Patrick think that he's reformed so they set him freaking free bro. But of course immediately Man Ray steals a power glove and snaps them. He runs off to rob a bank but then something happens. He still feels the tickle. This literally stops him from being evil and instead of robbing the bank he opens up a checking account. He even returns SpongeBob and Patrick to say goodbye, admitting that the lessons changed them. But did he really change? See, cause if we fast forward to episodes like Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy 5, Man Ray pulls a Drake and starts harassing teens at Makeout Reef by shining a flashlight at them. In the Bad Guy Club for Villains, Man Ray teams up with other villains like Dirty Bubble, Jumbo Shrimp, and then in Super Evil Aquatic Villain T- Bro, why is his name so freaking long? In this episode, Man Ray then joins forces with Plankton to steal a Krabby Patty secret formula thinking it was the key to world domination. How is this possible? I thought like he was a changed man and his urges to be bad were gone. I mean, bro eventually even scammed Squidward in Man Ray Returns by renting Squid's house with a fake check. Also, like why is he still wearing the tickle belt in later episodes when he took it off in Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy 3? It just doesn't make any sense. So what happened? Let's go back to the episode, Back to the Past. It starts with SpongeBob and Patrick strolling through Bikini Bottom when they spot Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy in their invisible boatmobile, completely out of gas. So off screen, SpongeBob and Patrick end up pushing the boat over several hills and as a reward, Barnacle Boy invites them into their warehouse, full of a bunch of stuff from their TV show, but with the same rule as last time. Don't touch anything. Naturally, they get super excited and check out all of the cool stuff, like the magic claw and Man Ray's power glove, but then Barnacle Boy shows them a time machine and warns them not to use it because, 
you know, obviously time machines could mess up an entire timeline. But almost immediately, Patrick mistakes the time machine for a vending machine and hits the button, transporting them to 1954 when Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy were young. They scold Patrick for his mistake, but then they notice Man Ray causing chaos and old bikini bottle. Then the younger mermaid man and barnacle boy tries to stop him with tartar sauce, but Patrick ate it all, leaving them completely defenseless. After that, SpongeBob and Patrick ditch everyone and try and go back to present day bikini bottom. But it is no longer bikini bottom. It's Man Rayopolis. Yeah. The Krusty Krab is now called the designated area where you are permitted by Man Ray, your ruler, to obtain sandwiches using Man Ray dollars. They go inside and find that the heroes from their time, right, like the ones that they went to the past with, yeah, they're dead and buried inside the restaurant, while the past versions of Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy are working there. Mermaid Man is the fry cook and Barnacle Boy is the cashier. Now, realizing they messed up the timeline, like, duh, they decide to go back and stop Patrick from eating the tartar sauce. But one small thing I want to point out before I talk about that, when old, young, old Mermaid Man, this Mermaid Man, this one, when he gets freed from his shot collar, he actually gets freed by what looks like the head of Man Ray. Bro, this just adds way more lore to the other theory that, I mean, maybe his body is made from a robot, but I don't know, because he's able to control it without the head. So I, I just don't see how that theory is possible. But anyways, anyways, they jump back in the time machine, but when they get there, the younger versions, well, I, not the younger versions, but like the original Mermaid Man and Particle Boy, they think that they're imposters. Then a big fight breaks out, creating the perfect distraction for Man Ray. And that's when the young Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy try to use the tartar sauce that two Patricks this time ate again. Like bruh. Suddenly more and more SpongeBob and Patricks duplicate start appearing from different time periods, all trying to fix the mess. The chaos continues with multiple time machines appearing everywhere, each bringing more and more Patricks and SpongeBob, all yelling at Patrick not to eat the tartar sauce. It's a total mess. But with all the warehouses popping up all over the place, Manta Ray actually gets more and more confused until finally he sits down on a log to think about what's going on and then he gets arrested by Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy. And as the episode ends, more and more warehouses appear all over the planet, each containing more copies of SpongeBob and Patrick trying to go back and revisit the day they defeated evil. But now, the theory and the theory is actually pretty freaking valid. This was never actually mentioned in the episode, but one thing this episode did help me answer is how Man Ray was able to continue being good after Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy 3 episode. You see, the tartar sauce that Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy were going to use on Man Ray in Back to the Past is the same tartar sauce he's frozen in Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy 3. But because Patrick ate the tartar sauce in the past, they had to capture Man Ray with, you know, the handcuffs. So in this alternate timeline, Man Ray never gets frozen in tartar sauce in the lair. This means that SpongeBob and Patrick never accidentally unfreeze him and never tried to reform him with the tickle belt. As a result, Man Ray never learns to be good and that's why in all the episodes mentioned earlier, he is still evil. Basically, in other words, Patrick eating the tartar sauce in the past changed everything, preventing Man Ray from getting the chance to actually be a good guy he said he was gonna be. Now again, this was never actually mentioned in the show or by the writers, but like, I don't know. I think this theory is like 100% bulletproof. And uh, yeah, if anybody can prove me wrong, leave a comment down below. And if not, then just let me know what your favorite new SpongeBob episode is. Cause this one, I'm not gonna lie, Back to the Past was a banger. Mm -hmm.